All right, people, so this is Ross. We have a really special video f out there for you guys in terms of pruning your young fig trees. And we've been really keeping track of the progress uh, from day one of all the different steps that I go through to get a younger tree, a younger fig tree established. And I'm going to create a playlist. If anyone out there is interested, you can go back and see really from step one which was essentially getting them out here um, on the patio, um, adjusting them to the outdoor environment after the rooting process. And then we basically spent an entire year at this point uh, trying to properly train them, trying to get them as established as possible, really focusing on feeding them well, uh, watering them well. Um, and now we're at the, the end of the season, and of course our trees are dormant or are going dormant, and we're going to do our pruning. And this is uh, probably one of the most, I mean this really is probably the most important thing of your tree. Because if you kind of get this wrong, all that growth and all that effort you put in during the season is sort of a waste. So. When we're trying to get our trees established, that's a really, you know, key word there. What does that really mean? Well, here's some actual examples of older trees that I have that we actually did a pruning video on recently as well. And these trees, I think, to know really how to prune the younger trees, you got to know what these older trees should look like. And essentially, what I like to do personally, is I like to have a single stemmed trunk. And you can obviously change that and do whatever you guys want. Um, you can have a bush form in a pot if you want, or you can even do this in the ground. So let's say you live in a warmer place. You could choose between a bush. You could, you could choose between a tree form. But for all intents and purposes of this video, I'm going to focus on the tree form. Um, I don't think it really matters, honestly. It's just more an aesthetic thing. So one, however, if you're doing this as a bush, you need to really focus on the scaffolds because like, no matter what it is, if it's a tree, if it's a bush, you're going to have scaffolds. So essentially, if there's a tree, you're going to have some sort of trunk and it's going to be at a certain height of whatever you want. And then from that trunk is going to be the scaffolds and those are permanent. And you can have any number between, let's say, two to five scaffolds. And in all honesty, a bush is really the same thing. It's just it doesn't have that trunk part that you might find at the bottom. It starts off with the scaffolds. So that's really what you need to focus on is because I love to train these trees now with the scaffolds really spread apart. Um, if you don't have them spread apart, you don't have them a certain length, you're just not going to get the right light penetration into the center of your tree to get your tree really to form fruits because it just will not fruit. So this is technically here, the center of the tree, and this just was not all that productive for me this year. So what I have to do next year is really bend these branches here, these scaffolds that we've sort of lengthened over time. And by bending these, it then allows my fruiting branches on the right and on the left to have the right light penetration so that they can set the fruits. The same thing will happen here in the middle. So that's sort of what we're trying to focus on in the future of this tree, is that what I would ideally like to do on a young tree that we're gonna show you guys is to one, get the, get the trunk established, number one, or number two, get some sort of scaffolding established. And that's it. Anything beyond that in terms of these fruiting branches is not really all that necessary just yet because if you have the scaffolds and you have those correct at the right length and the right distance, the right symmetry, the right amount, um, you're going to have fruiting branches that are perfectly fine the following season. I mean, that's ideally what we wanted was that we started out when we rooted these trees indoors. Let me see if I can find something that's kind of small. Maybe we started out with something like this that really didn't have all that much growth to it. And what the ideal scenario to have this smaller tree was then we then wanted to form something that either looked like this, that has a long single stem 
or something a little bit different. Let me show you some other, another example. Here's a good example right here where we have a single stem trunk and then it branches out into two scaffolds and forms that V, right? So that's, this tree here as an example is basically a finished product. And what we're gonna have to do with this one, I'll show it to you guys right now, what I'm gonna do is all I'm gonna do essentially is take off the tips. I'm gonna really try to avoid, because I like the length of these scaffolds, you know? The trunk is about, I don't know, a foot in height, and then the scaffolds are probably a foot and a half, almost two feet in height. I like that length, that's a good length, because that means you can either, I could really spread these out even further, which I will do next year. Um, staking is really a big part of this, guys. So it's not just enough to do some pruning, we wanna actually think about using stakes next year to really aid the form and to have that form on these perfect, the perfect angle because you know, the trunk has just gotta be straight up in the air. And of course you wanna, you know, you're gonna wanna um, to stake the trunk to have that right form, right? To have a, a trunk that's straight up in the air. But these scaffolds, you really want them on an angle. So I would even argue probably somewhere between a, you know, like a 45 and I don't know, a 50 degree angle, something like this. I think that's about 45 degrees. Whereas something like this is maybe more like a 75 degree angle or an 80 degree angle. This is probably 75. You want somewhere between a 45. Well, actually I think a 45 would be completely horizontal, wouldn't it? So you want something between a 60, 65 and a 55 degree angle, which is about like this. Sorry guys, I haven't been in, uh, you know, fifth grade math class in quite some time, but that's the ideal ratio there because certain varieties, guys, these are all different genetics. They all have different genes that are telling them to grow in a certain way. So certain varieties are going to have that right angle, that 55 between 55 and 65 degree angle. Others are going to be growing more erect, more straight up in the air. Others are going to really want to sprawl out. So you ideally want to just correct that, especially with these scaffolds. That's really, really important is to have that right angle, right? We want to have something that's straight up in the air in the form of the trunk at a particular height. Doesn't, it's up to you. It doesn't matter. You know, you could train, you could prune them all the way at my chest as an example, which some of these are, and we'll show you in just a minute. But after that, we just get those scaffolds on the right angle and we can stake them next year and then we're done. That's really all it is. So with this particular tree, I'll just do it real quick because I, I forgot I wasn't going, I was going to prune it. But I like the length of these scaffolds. So all I'm going to do is actually just take off the tip. This is about, this scaffold here is about maybe, uh, you know, 20 inches in length. So we're going to keep it like that and just take off the tip. And then this one, I also want to be roughly 20 inches in length. And I'm going to shorten this to one branch. It kind of branched off, it forked off here a little bit. So this is a little bit longer. This is probably two feet here on the right. This is probably 20 inches here on the left. And that's exactly what we want. All right, so let me show you guys some examples now. Probably some better examples because we have them here against this wall and it'll be easier to see. But, you know, some of these here as an example, like this guy, is at the right height or at least the height that you would think you would want it at, right? Maybe you want it down here. So if you want the height, you want the trunk to be only so high, then you're going to cut it back here, right? And it all depends on, you know, the, the lower you make the trunk of these trees, the lower you make this first cut, the shorter the tree will be, you know, years from now. If you instead, let's see if I take the tip off here, and I have the scaffolds then form here, then this is gonna be a much larger tree. So it really depends on what you want, what your storage conditions are like. What is the most ideal scenario for you? So for me, it doesn't really matter. And I um, don't necessarily care too much about the height, but I would like a shorter trunk. So I think probably around 18 inches is probably the most ideal for me and my storage conditions and what I want out of my trees. You can't go wrong here. Now, 
This is the main trunk. And the reason I've selected this as the main trunk is because it's the healthiest, it's the most vigorous. Um, it should be the best branch for the future of the tree. If you don't have a branch that's really healthy, that looks very healthy, that has got some decent node spacing to it, that could be an issue. And what you're gonna have to do actually is do some rejuvenation pruning on some of these trees, which I will. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. And that we're gonna cut off basically all of the growth in order to establish ourselves a really, really healthy base as we have here on this particular tree. Now, I'm not going for a bush form. So this tree here in particular has a branch down here that's unnecessary, that is uh, impeding the growth, um, or actually not impeding the growth, but impeding the form of our tree. So in order to maintain this as a tree, we have to cut out all the suckers, all, this, all the shoots from the base, whatever it is what have you guys it's really that simple um, here's another example right here right next to it which is just a much shorter version of this and that's it we just take off the tip call it a day it'll branch out have its scaffolds and next year we'll limit this tree and this tree here that we just cut to roughly about two to four scaffolds those will be also uh they'll have fruit on them if we have scaffolds guys that are spaced correctly um, that are on the right angle, right? That 55 to 65 degree angle, they're gonna have that light penetration and they're actually gonna put out some fruit for us. So that's good, that's what we want. But we're also in the meantime, getting ourselves the right form. And then the following season, unfortunately, we're gonna have to spend a whole season of just growing scaffolds. And the following season, this tree will then be established. Now, I do have another tree right here, I'll show you. This is actually a bush form, this tree and it has two shoots from the base that i think are really healthy um, so i don't necessarily feel the desire to get rid of these either one of them i think this tree could go on the way it is and have a really successful life what we do need to do because this tree has quite erect in its angle of the branches because the scaffolds then start at the soil level and not let's say 18 inches high where the scaffolds will start on these trees we need to then bend these branches away from each other next year. So again, these stakes here, guys, are extremely, extremely important. Even though we're pruning them, your job is not finished. Next season, in the spring, I will do a video showing you how I'm staking each and every one of these trees to get that angle of these scaffolds that I'm talking about. And essentially, this will just go down in here on the edge of the tree, and I will attach this to the stake and that will give me the perfect light penetration that I'm looking for. So this tree essentially already has its, its two scaffolds. And what I need to do at this point is just maintain those two scaffolds. So I'm gonna cut off these lower shoots that don't really do anything for the form and actually will crowd the tree and you, you're not gonna have as much light penetration as you would want. So I'm gonna cut off all of this and then I'm also here at the top because these, these two scaffolds now coming from the base, we're just gonna cut these off at the top. And this is just, again, gonna make the tree branch out. As soon as you cut off the tip, that growth tip here, and I'll show you what that looks like, very easily it just makes the tree have different hormones next year and allows that dominance to go in other places. So here's a good example. Here's the tip that we're gonna take off. This guy right here where my thumb is. We just take off that tip and I'll show you here one second. I'll make a cut on this tree just for demonstration purposes. We can come in here and very simply cut off the tip. And this will form branches here. These will form the scaffolds at the height that we want, right? So it's really that simple. Um, all right, let's just do a couple more examples for you guys. I have some trees. Try to stick these guys here on the, on the wall so it's easier to see. We have this tree right here, which has got a really nice shoot that I think is quite healthy. We'll keep that. We won't have to rejuvenation prune this. While I'm doing this, I'm also checking for pests, things like scale other different things, other pieces of the wood that could be damaged or diseased or dead. We cut all that out. 
this tree is really healthy, so I'm just gonna cut off that shoot. Next year, we'll stake this up so it's nice and straight. And right now, I'm just gonna take off the tip and it's gonna branch out at the height desired. In fact, actually, I think I'm gonna bring it back just a little bit. And there you go. This tree now is at about the height that I would like it to start at, which is about 18, about 18 inches. Here's another tree which has a great form to it already. It's almost got the scaffolds that we want, um, except they're not very long, and that's the problem. So if I turn this to the side, maybe that's a better view, is that we have the main trunk here, which is about at 18 inches, and then we have it branching off into two different directions here. And I could stake these next year. The problem is, is that this guy here on the right is not really that long and because of that it's going to have to continue its growth so i'm not going to take off the tip off of this particular scaffold i will however on this side because what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut this back and then i'm going to cut the top off of this probably about right there which is going to allow this to branch out and form a couple fruiting branches next year whereas this one will just form and continue on with that length of the scaffold to finish off this form and next year I'll bend them to the right angle so it has that V and it's just the best we can get it all right we have this little guy down here and he is not very healthy at all actually in fact I don't like this tree much at all so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come in here to pretty much chop off the entire tree. And that's what we just did, we, top, we chopped it off. This is going to start that rejuvenation process. And this rejuvenation process is going to allow it to branch out here at a much lower height. Hopefully we'll get a sucker that comes up from the base and this will then become the main trunk of our tree because this main trunk here, guys, is really, really important for the future of the tree. This form that we're establishing right now, the scaffolds, it's all permanent. So if they're not healthy, they're not at the right length, they're not at the right angle, we're gonna struggle with our tree in the future, especially if the tree is not very healthy to start. Yes, you can feed your tree a bunch to shake the virus and to make it healthy, but at the end of the day, you're kind of just banging your head against the wall. You're way better off doing it like this. Here we have just one single shoot all the way up. It's just a single stemmed whip. So what I'm gonna do is actually cut this back uh, to a height of my choosing. And it's actually really quite healthy. So I have no problem doing that. We're just gonna cut these cuttings. Very vigorous variety, whatever this is. I think it's probably yeah, it's violet patlican. So yeah, it's just a very vigorous tree. This guy here, Martin and Blanca, has the form that we want already. And this one's good to go next year. All I'm gonna do is cut off everything else but these two scaffolds. We have the trunk here at about a foot. And this is ready to do its thing. So I'm gonna cut off the tip here on this side. I'm gonna cut off the tip on this side. And I'm making a decision here of where to make my cut here at the top of the scaffold because I don't want to make the scaffold too short, right? I want to have them wide enough, long enough, so that when I bend these branches away from each other, the fruiting branches are also quite far away from each other. So I don't want to, I don't want to lower the height of the scaffold too much, but what I do want to do is make sure that whatever scaffold I choose or wherever I make my cut along the scaffold, that I am making sure that there's outward growing buds. And they're gonna grow hopefully, you know, in a way that's gonna be beneficial with the light penetration. So I think that's about where I want, is that there's a bud that'll go out this way, one that'll probably go out that way, and one down here at the bottom that will go off to the right or towards the, uh, the house here. Here's another example of just a single stem whip. We're gonna come in here and cut this way back to the height desired. That's it. 
So I think you guys get this now. I think this is making some sense. Um, principles are pretty clear. The rules are pretty clear. It's all about that light penetration. And uh, let me show you just real quick up close what some of these guys look like. So here's the tree that we just cut this guy way back to the height desired. Again, height desired. We didn't actually take off the tip off of this one, but we don't have to because the growth tip is just not present on that. Took off the tip on that one. I'm in the shadow here, I'm in, I'm in the light, but again, that's the one we just took off the top off of. Here's the trees with the scaffolds, one going in each direction. We kept the tip on that one. Here's another one with the scaffolds. Here's one that's a single stem, single stem. And then here's actually the tree that we cut way back to rejuvenation prune this. And hopefully we get something actually from below the soil. But this is really healthy growth right here. So even if it branches out from here, I'm pretty confident that we'll have a, uh, a very healthy tree. It's just I really did not like the current state of the tree. Here's actually one that has three branches coming from the base. And I could train this as a bush, I probably will. But I have to make sure again that I'm bending these branches away from each other because these are the scaffolds, even though it's a bush form. All right, peoples, I think you guys get it. It's all making sense. Uh, again, this is really isn't rocket science. You know, I think it just comes down to a little bit of finesse, you know, with some of this stuff. Like this guy here, you know, he's still a bit young. He's still got a while to go. I'm just going to prune it back to what's whatever is healthy, right? Um, in terms of the length of these scaffolds and choosing, let's say we're choosing between this guy here or this guy here. Well, this growth looks a lot more healthy. And you can see down here this really tight node spacing. The growth doesn't look all that great. It hasn't grown all that well until it got up to about here where it probably had enough food and it shook the virus. So I'm gonna actually prune this off and then this will become the main trunk of the tree, which we need to stake up next year. You know, in terms of the lengths and the heights and different things like that, it's up to you, but Anything you can do to widen the canopy of your tree is really going to make a big, big difference in terms of how much fruit it can put out. You know, this is a variety here, Smith, that's very erect. Let me showed you guys. This is one of my more mature trees, and it just has very short scaffolds. Like, this is where we made our cut, and this is probably only a foot, maybe not even a foot. This one over here is maybe 18 inches, which is pretty decent. But you can see the angle of these branches. It's really not all that great. We need to have a wider angle, longer scaffolds, because then when these fruiting branches form, they need to be out further away from what's in the center of the tree, because the center of that tree is just getting shaded, and therefore it's not forming fruit. So yeah, I made my point here, guys. If you enjoyed this one, check out the other videos we've done now, because we did a number of videos on pruning these these trees we did some on the mature trees like these we just showed you guys we also did a video on pruning the in-ground trees in the form of my um, cut and cover method and what we're doing with that um, you can see they're all pruned here on this side of the yard cut way back to 6 to 12 inches and then also check out the playlist that I'm going to create on these younger trees um, just the whole step-by-step -step process of caring for a young tree in terms of feeding it, watering it, training it, now pruning it, and then next year actually we'll be staking it and then we'll pretty much be done at that point. Probably only about five or six videos that are really well, well worth watching and uh, worth your time. All right, guys, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you soon. Take care. I'll see you guys for the next one.